have considered doing a step-by-step -step how to do the KDP on a 24 valve turbo diesel and uh, it just got to be I just I got to pay attention to what I'm doing here so sorry you're not going to get a step-by-step -step, and I'm far from a Cummins mechanic, Cummins mechanic so I shouldn't really be the dude doing it anyway I'm just going to show you how I do it and we'll go from there and we'll see if it works we'll see even if this engine needs a KDP fix this may be a casting that uh, is fixed who knows I did remove the recovery overflow I drained down I stuck a siphon in there and I drained down about half the radiator so I could remove the upper radiator hose um, that just gives me more access I could have probably figured and I'm draining out the washer fluid now I could have probably figured out a way to get this all out of the way with the upper radiator hose up there but quite honestly it's so easy to do the two little two hose clamps and uh, drain out a little bit about three quarts of that fluid almost a full gallon actually probably wherever it is yeah it's probably almost a gallon of antifreeze I took out of there and um, that's not horrible I had a chance to look around a bit so I'm gonna pop this washer fluid off pop the fan shroud off start disassembling the front of the engine I'll bring you back here uh, when I got this cover off to see if this was even necessary this all may be for naught but peace of mind man that's priceless I'll be right back you know the whole time I'm taking this thing apart I'm beating myself up trying to figure out exactly why am I tearing apart a perfectly good running vehicle that doesn't leak a drop of oil I've torn the transmission apart for preventative maintenance that I guess it didn't really need and here I am tearing apart the front half of this engine to look at a killer dial pin that may or may not even exist on this casting <clears throat> I guess uh, the upside would be if I pulled this cover off and I found the pin precariously dangling. That would be awesome. Anyhow, I got the fan, got the fan holder assembly off, uh, got everything fan shroud out. I just need to pull off that harmonic balancer pulley or the bottom pulley there. Blow things out real good because I don't want to put a bunch of dirt into the crankcase. And then uh, we'll see what we can see. Well, that went a little easier than I thought it would. The harmonic balancer came right off. All four bolts came out. I mean, they were tight, but they didn't uh, fight me too bad. It was a little juicy back there. But I got a new seal from Cummins. Let's pull this cover and see what we can find. Uh, let's set this down. I got crap everywhere. Oops. That's a great little butterfly. All right. Looks like they used a heap and helping of gray RTV silicone. There's no thread lock or anything on these threads. They sure did use a lot of gray silicone. Makes me wonder if that's factory. If that's factory, boy, oh boy, that's pretty sloppy. But I'm going to run all these through a thread chase just like I did for the bolts on the back of the transmission to clean them up. I'll probably put a drop of blue medium strength thread locker on there and then I do have more gray silicone so let's tippy tappy and let's see what we, what we got here this ain't it. Ooh, oh frick wow I need a pretty stars come out at night except during the day Okay, I got it on camera. We're all good. That thought don't hit me on the head. I did not expect it to come loose that quickly. So, what I've done today is really just kind of exploratory surgery. It's just kind of because I'm that guy that's going to have that in the back of my head going, I wonder if this is one of those 12 valve blocks that's going to give me grief. Where's that old sock? What do I do with that thing? Um, that's going to give me grief and have the pin fall out. Okay, because if it was going to fall out anywhere, this would have been it right here. Okay? Now, it could either fall out and go this way, get pinned between the gear and this timing cover, because this is separate from the engine block, right? This is aluminum. If this little steel pin got in here, by the time it got about, about here, there's not enough clearance for it. And, well, steel steel pin aluminum housing 
the aluminum housing is going to lose every time and it'll blow out this side of your timing cover cause you trouble. Um, I suppose it had the, it could have the possibility of falling out somehow getting in between here and dropping down without causing any damage but that seems pretty unlikely. The other option is somehow it would get caught in between the gears here bounce around until it got jammed up in here and then steel, steel, steel this is your crank, uh, excuse me, this is your cam this is your crank, something bad's gonna happen uh, but here's what we found out so that's a lot of talking to find out that the pin is still deep set it in there okay and let me show you something with a flashlight yeah. the pin is fully set it's fully set in there I can't tap it in any farther I mean I haven't tried but it's deep in there and if you take a look here about an eighth of an inch in from this lip I'm trying to hold the camera trying to balance everything like a circus act there's a ridge there's a ridge in the casting there that won't allow that pin to back out. So this ridge goes all the way around. So uh, as it turns out, this is this is an engine block that doesn't need a KDP fix. But am I still going to tab it? You know what? I'm going to call Wayne from the diesel stop right now, and I'm going to I'm going to check with him. But more than likely, because I'm already here, I've already got it apart. It'll take me probably a half hour because it's stepped up here. But I'll make a little doodad tab that comes off of this bolt. I will just go over that. And I got a phone call from Wayne over at the diesel stop. And uh, he did some research on why it appeared that this dowel pin um, had been collared. And he said there was a factory recall on it. Apparently, he's, the first thing he said was, was there gray silicone, RTV silicone on the timing cover gasket? I said, yes, there was. He says, ah, they've already fixed it. <sighs> yeah. Interestingly enough, I couldn't, well, I don't know, whatever. I am what I am. And uh, if I had known that before, I would have left it alone. But I didn't know that, and, uh, well, whatever. So now we've got double duty. There's the fix. I built the tab. I'll show you the picture of the tab right now. And I went ahead and installed the tab there with the, uh, yeah, just with the knowledge that I'm basically overkilling overkill here. Um, so yeah, the gray silicone was an indicator that the factory had replaced this timing cover, uh, timing gear cover, the entire uh, housing, excuse me, not the cover, the entire, the entire thing. Um, yeah, which is interesting to me because I've got all the paperwork allegedly from the day one of this vehicle rolling off the factory floor and into the original owner's hands and then into me, the second owner's hands. So. Unless they did that fix before they even sold it, maybe? I don't know. Kind of weird. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares is I got all the old gray silicone off of here. I hit it with a uh, wire wheel. And I came through and hit it with some brake clean. And then finally I hit it with some 70% alcohol to get the final bit of the oils and stuff off of there. So I've got gray RTV silicone. I'm just going to... I already popped the new seal in. You see there's the... There's a little thing they give you to help you line up the seal so you don't fold it over in the process of installing this cover. So I'm going to set the camera down and get back to work here. I'll show you when this thing's back on. So I'm going through and I'm running all these bolts, the timing gear cover bolts. And look at this. I mean, I saw this before. I didn't really didn't give it much thought. But there's gray, RT, oop, there's gray RTV silicone all over these bolts. So yeah, maybe I'll give the old fellow a call and see if I can jog his memory. Um, if he remembers taking this in. Maybe it was fixed. Like I said, maybe it was fixed before they even sold it. I guess that's possible. I don't know. Alright, this is the tedious, the tedious stuff here. But it's the way to make it right. I don't like oil leaks, so we'll be back here in just a few. Timing cover on, new seals installed. See, how hard is this? KDP done. How hard is that? I'm actually a little bit frustrated, quite honestly. I didn't find out till after. <clears throat> I didn't even think about this having been a warranty repair. I mean, I don't mind the fact that I was able to get up close and personal with this engine. Get a good inspection on things. That main crank seal was weeping a little bit, and it would have just been a matter of time before that would have leaked. So I got to kind of look at it that way. Otherwise, I get irritated, and I don't want to be irritated. It's a beautiful day today. 
All right, let's keep assembling this thing and uh, get back to you in just a minute. I like it when you're down to the last few parts and you don't have extra parts. Upper radiator hose, washer fluid, reservoir, overflow reservoir for the radiator. We'll check the same fluids right back in this old girl. Turn the key and see what happens. Well, I'll hook the battery up, but uh, this is a good opportunity to put a new belt in. Uh, yeah, the old belt that was in there, it was average. But for 19 bucks, you go to Napa and get a new belt. I put the old belt under the seat in the back in case I ever shred this one on the road. At least I got a spare. Like I said, there's not anything too wrong with that one. I don't know how old that belt is. It was in average condition, but uh, yeah, this one's brand new. That show in Mexico. Yeah, buddy. All right, a couple more things and see uh, we'll see if she starts.